well hello everybody and uh, you know just before i begin uh, my uh, talk or speech just wanted to share that you know the, what were the possibilities of me coming in front of you guys uh, sharing my thoughts my stories on this uh, you know saturday afternoon when my doctor had clearly suggested that i should take a seven day long voice uh, rest um you know, believe it or not when i was having a, a discussion with my doctor just about 3 4 days back he came up with a very interesting suggestion that in case you cannot speak why don't you write your speech and send it to the college so that they can read it out you know i don't know whether that would be possible but definitely something that ted might consider in the near future right um uh, talking about possibilities right there are certain things that of course uh, you know it it catches your attention at the very first moment when you actually uh, hear or look at it so when i actually read about the story of a brooklyn based photographer called jeremy cohen who impressed uh, his girlfriend by flying a drone in the lockdown period you know i was taken aback i was uh, you know i was quite surprised at at what what went there and uh, when i saw this story trending all over twitter i went out and checked this particular video that was actually done what that was launched some time back so what he did is one fine evening he was actually stepping out to his terrace and he saw a girl dancing on the terrace and he was so so excited to see that girl that he wanted to get in touch with her but what could have been possible because we were all in a lockdown situation so what he decided is write a small message on a little sheet of paper stuck you know stuck it on his drone and he flew it onto the girl's terrace and thankfully the girl actually reciprocated and he she also took that drone out he, she also wrote a message and just sent it back to uh, jeremy and you know when he shared the story all over twitter and it got covered by so many national and international uh, you know news or media uh, you know publications that uh, you know it drew, drew my attention and they are pretty going pretty strong and uh, they have done so many virtual dates on the rooftop and uh, makes me feel that okay this was also a possibility and recently you know jeremy uh, actually got in touch with us because of one of our projects with the nft community and we got a ch chance to interact with him so and ask me anything session on discord and the story that we heard was absolutely unimaginable you know that brings me to a very uh, you know interesting uh, discussion or inter interesting uh, story that i wanted to share with you some of you might have seen pictures like these you know uh, trending over instagram sometime back right uh, well this was never a possibility for a street photographer to go ahead and do something like this it was essentially like an autobiography of a ghost when you know they move on or he or she moves out onto the streets of calcutta and this was a concept that was plugged in by my friend ananya who you know wanted to share that you know what, what would have been a uh, what would have a ghost uh, thought about when uh, he stepped out onto the streets uh, just to see the reaction of people and probably this something like this hasn't done been done so far and this particular idea was so so interesting so engrossing and the kind of reactions we got uh, both on instagram as well as the people when they saw that somebody you know dressed up in this weird costume was um, you know posing in front of their homes it was unimaginable and a lot of media channels got in touch with us asking about how this entire idea of a bengali halloween came to our mind now um, that brings me to the very point that uh, how does this entire idea strike a chord with me how did i resonate with this when ananya and shubhayu also one of my friends uh, gave me this um, i guess this is attributable to uh, you know one of my very you know favorite topics that i always used to uh, used to you know participate in always used to write were autobiographies and autobiographies i don't mean my own autobiography i mean those autobiographies of little objects uh, that didn't have a voice i became their voice as a little kid so all of us remember that the english paper had like five six topics that we had to write on like five essays uh, where there were some very typical topics like uh, you know whether science is a boon or a bane or internet whether it has to be used or not a lot of people used to prepare that they used to come and write those in the english examination but i always used to attempt those autobiographies and i always used to used to write those um but then what made me uh, you know very inclined towards writing these autobiographies perhaps this story is not so pleasant and not so funny as i you know probably discussed about the first few stories so a lot of us complain about nuclear families these days right we talk about how joint families are are not 
uh, much into prominence people stay uh, separately and they do not eat together they do not participate in events together but i've been part of a very toxic uh, joint family setup where our performances or rather we were discriminated we were debarred based on our academic performances and our prowess in our in our extracurriculars as well so uh, i do not know why but uh, there were certain instances when i was always not made part of various family affairs especially with my cousins because i was good in studies i was good in extracurriculars people thought that i was from a different league so imagine a little kid who was dressing up for for a durga puja outing just just explodes that the entire family has left without him and he was you know crying behind the closed doors nobody to listen to him but eventually he also got used to it so human human elements or other human uh, you know characters actually make us accustomed to every possible scenario but that remained that feeling remained with me and that's how i started connecting to a lot of objects that had similar stories to me but uh, they didn't have a voice to share with the rest of the world for example think about a pen so a pen is essentially used to write but think about the pain and agony that a pen uh, used to go through when we played played pen fight on those hard benches in school right i used to become their voice i used to write about them think about an umbrella so all of us uh, i think we lose umbrellas almost every alternate day at least i do when i travel by uber or a bus i tend to lose umbrella think about what an umbrella goes through when these you know hands are continuously changed when it finds itself in a new environment altogether how does it actually react to that change think about those tazos remember those tazos that used to be a part of every child's collection uh, in the 90s so while they were in prominence people used to use them as status symbols the number of tazos that you have and now that they are not even talked about what happens to those little tazos that are left in the you know dirty corner of the room think about those stamps nobody talks about stamp collection these days they are pretty much you know inserted in those diaries and that are also left in that corner so they feel claustrophobic so probably you know i tried to become the voice you know of those objects that didn't have a voice to it and i started uh, to relate to them very much and that transpired eventually when my first publication as an author came out in the book called Sto uh, soul soul city Uh, if you can see my screen this was the first publication and if you see that of course the cover image is mine but what i wanted to talk about was uh, the story that i wrote there probably for the first time i wrote my autobiography there i know a lot of readers had actually got in touch with me asking that you know there were so many layers in that book in that particular story uh, what was it about so you know uh, the, for the ones who haven't read that book and that story please go and uh, and read it you will you will definitely relate to it now and now that i talked about soul city uh, there were some things that of course were trending on social media on my handle some time back and because i knew my subject so well because i knew my photograph so well i created something like this right so for a lot of people i know because i receive these comments on instagram very very regularly is that is it one photograph or are there more than one photographs in it it's not one there are two pictures in it and it's like a seamless collage which i call split screen or diptych which is actually a very interesting concept and uh, many of you can actually do it the idea is to put two images together in form of a seamless collage something like this as well so if you see the upper portion is uh, you know a model and the lower portion is it was clicked in mumbai some time back but they have merged together in form of one picture this wouldn't have been possible had i actually you know not known my subjects had i not connected to my subjects very well in my entire course of my journey now knowing about the subject well let me talk about the live photography competition called kalan photo marathon which is the largest you know photography competition that happens in india across uh, you know across any time i mean it has been it has been in history the largest photo competition live photo competition and when i participated in it in it there was no possibility for me to win it because i had never you know shot pictures within a very limited period of time so the format is in the morning and the evening you are given two themes you have to go out there you have to click images you have to come back and the best images will win the competition so if you look at this image that actually won it the theme was food the heaven so a lot of people in calcutta relate to street food very much but uh, you know essentially the idea was to bring out a proper storytelling moment so if you see that this is a placard where it's written that you know uh, bengal is the largest producer of vegetables rice and honey so i thought why not go to this place and look for a moment out here and if you see somebody is eating a chip so it's a very interesting way of representing the idea of foodie heaven and i didn't know about i actually wouldn't have known about the location of this particular placard 
had I not been part of the Bengal Global Business Summit, uh, which uh, eventually happened on the same year. That, of course, took me to Japan. This was, uh, you know, one, one moment uh, that I would savor for the rest of my life. Uh, and in Japan, what happened was another possibility which I never thought. I connected to photographers and artists from various parts of Asia. And uh, the way that I learned so many things, the way that I built my community, the way that I am still in touch with them, I got to know how they exhibit their work, how they sell their work, how they showcase the work to the rest of the world in spite of not being on any social media platforms was very enriching for me. And now that I talked about selling your work, believe it or not, you know, three or four years back, if somebody had asked me that whether being a street photography or a documentary photography enthusiast, was there any possibility that there's a guarantee that you will earn a full-time revenue or a full-time living with just doing street and documentary? In fact, my mom asked the same question that if you want to live a, a corporate job, especially in a big four, uh, is there any guarantee that you will actually earn a, a living for you of the same level? Perhaps three or four years back, I would, would have said no, I wouldn't have an answer. But recently, I became part of the NFT community or the non-fungible token community, which is like a brewing space for artists who are changing their lives altogether because people are selling their works for literally, you know, uh, lakhs of rupees. And, you know, when I entered into the NFT world, just about uh, two weeks back, yeah, two weeks back, I was thrilled that the first sale that happened for 0.25 Ethereum, that's almost like 50,000 or 60,000 INA rupee, happened within 24 hours of me posting my work on a platform called OpenSea. And not just selling my work, the possibility of selling your work is of course there, but the idea of building a closely knit community in spite of so much of competition happening around the globe in the artist community is spectacular. You know, I recently saw that one of my friends, Sanneeb, was really struggling with one of his sales. And I saw one of my friends, Rohit, come in and buy his work within just about two or three days and the the conversation between them was amazing i mean uh, you would never see that you know so much of backbiting happening so much of competition happening people would actually promote the other photographers work on the platform and of course now we talk about the social and economic aspect which was always not a possibility but the nft space has brought in this entire sense when you saw that Jack Dorsley, the uh, Twitter CEO's first tweet that got sold at almost like 3 million US dollars, which was sold uh, for, uh, you know, supporting the COVID relief fund uh, in Africa. And when you talk about uh, a lot of wildlife collectives that are there, it's a collective where people can auction their images for 50% of their you know uh, entire revenue being donated towards the orangutan uh, outage outreach and i think that's something that uh, in you can definitely look at now when you talk about community building right what do we talk about our own community our own in-house community calcutta instagrammers which were just formed six years back that story you know inspires me still inspires me with every possible day because nobody gave us a chance especially in a city which is dominated by so many traditionally rich photographers instagram was never a platform for them to showcase their work as a primary source of uh, you know showcasing their work on any platform it was mostly flickr or 500px <coughs> now that we have almost like over two lakh members across all the platforms combined it, it gives me immense pleasure to share that you know more than 1.5 million plus images on our repository is perhaps the most by any community in the eastern india and that doesn't segregate even you you know the entire co college who's a part of the activities uh, of the tedx uh, talk today and the participants who are a part of it you can also submit your images uh, irrespective of the device that you have clicked that is how inclusive our community is and there's 100 percent chance of us going ahead and featuring it to the rest of the world and you will also get a chance uh, uh, you know, to, to be a part of many of our exhibitions or online confluences. So we have been part of, of the first and the most important and most importantly, the only Instagram exhibition that happened in the city a couple of years back. Talking about a permanent exhibition, Met Cafe Hall, which was, you know, uh, just, just relaunched a couple of years back. There's a permanent exhibition completely curated by us, the Calcutta Instagrammers in this space. And of course, the biggest part is that we have worked with more than 125 plus brands to promote their brand on our platform. Um, and over the years, we want to integrate with more brands. Now that I talked about, you know, brand integration, I said that I worked with 125 plus brands. But did I say that how many brands, how many offers did I reject in the process? Was it even a possibility for me to say no to brands? Yes, it was right from day one. 
So if 125 plus brands are there in our portfolio, maybe I have said no to how many? To almost like 3x number of brands. In fact, right, right before the TED talk, there was an outreach activity which was proposed to us and I said no. Of course, with that idea that, you know, our, our, the way that we showcase our work is, is very different. The way that we add value is very different. The value proposition and the way that we showcase the work is very different. So we have our own set of parameters and we don't want to, you know, uh, avoid that if the costing or the pricing doesn't match. So that was also a possibility that we explored. And the last but most important thing is that we have been talking about showcasing work, but what have we done to stop plagiarism? Because we see that these days, a lot of photographs circulate via WhatsApp, a lot of photographs are downloaded from Facebook, you know, uh, over the internet and shared. I think what we have done is over through the workshops, we have tried to educate people to take this right up to the grassroots levels. And by grassroots levels, we talk about the parents as well. So believe me, uh, you know, when I was actually, uh, I was just talking to my parents last time and they instantly forwarded a picture uh, of, of the New Year celebrations happening somewhere else to me. And that is when I stepped into the picture and said that, no, this is not, not done. So I guess that entire education or the entire sensitization process can start at home. And we as Calcutta Instagrammers, we have actually explored the possibility of stopping plagiarism in the entire process. With that, uh, I would like to thank all of you for being a part of my journey. Uh, being a part of my community development initiatives and of course believe it or not creativity or thought process has a lot of possibilities and you can actually do that with a full-time job as well if you decide to actually come ahead and showcase your work and showcase your things showcase your creativity to the rest of the world with having a complete full-time job that is also possible so just you know, focus on whatever you are doing, just focus on whatever you want to do and have a very strong plan going ahead. And I think you will be eventually successful. Thank you so much for having me. It was a real pleasure talking to you guys and hope to connect to you really soon. And of course, thank you so much.